Hey everybody, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Sorry about the uh, the parody yesterday on, <laughs> on GRQ. Believe it or not, 99.5% of people knew it was a joke, but there's one half of 1% of people thought it was for real. So uh, it was the first time ever my subscribership actually went down. I had a bunch of people unsubscribed. So there we are. But uh, it doesn't matter. We care about the smart 99.5% of people. The other half of 1% cannot be saved. The other thing I'm going to touch on today is, yes, the market is brutal. Yes, we're hit by a ton more FUD. Evergrande came back to roost again. I reported it first like five, six weeks ago. Here it is. We're going to touch on that today. Hang tough, everybody. But we're also going to analyze what I like to look at a lot. It's called time series analysis and investing. So with that, let's jump in and see what we got. So let me pop up. The slides. Hope everybody's doing well. Big thank you as well to the moderators here, keeping us all safe and scammer free, because that's what we care about. Channels about math, money, and freedom. And of course, this is edutainment, just like yesterday. So, first of all, breaking news Evergrande defaults. Woohoo! Everybody knew this three months ago, uh, two months ago, last week. But, you know, it's just the way the markets are, the way they react. Now, Surprise, it's not just Evergrande as well. It's also a group called Kaiser, which you touched on as well a few weeks ago. And uh, crypto tumbled 5%. Stock markets got hit too as well. It's just, you know, no surprise. It's why we hedge and why we protect ourselves. But let's see exactly where we go from here and what it all means. So first of all, Everything was trending lower. Uh, these two Chinese real estate developers, Evergrande and Kaiser, were unable to make their scheduled US dollar payments. They had 30 days uh, grace period to make it. Everybody knew it wasn't going to happen. Uh, the debt ratio of these organizations is six to one. Normally, a corporation should have about 30% of the value as debt. These guys have 6x their value as debt. So total house of cards. We'll see what happens. Uh, the Chinese government is doing some more money printing. And it seems to be a common solution to all problems. And that's why we love inflation. No, we don't. Inflation is the silent thief. But anyway, let's move on. So what is the real concern? How does this impact the crypto markets? Here you see Tether. They deny holding commercial paper issued by troubled real estate developer Evergrande. So again, can you trust Tether? I don't know. You can't trust anybody in this space. Trust but verify. And uh, they haven't been able to give me confirmation that they don't have any commercial paper with holes in it. So we'll watch this carefully. Now, Tether is a Hong Kong-based uh, fund. Can they figure their way out? There is a theory out there, everybody, as well, just so you guys are aware, that perhaps, I'm not saying this could happen, but maybe um, there is a way of Tether finding the way out of this if they do have a big hole in their commercial paper. And that is the classic pump and dump scheme. So they could try and spike, which means drive the price of Bitcoin up like crazy, sell it, wait for it to crash, and then recoup their money. It's a theory that some people have. It may be far-fetched, but you always need to be very paranoid in this game and always think three steps ahead, like 3D chess, and uh, think of all permutations and combinations that could hit so we will monitor this carefully. But right now, it looks like we are back at Bitcoin levels we have not seen since Monday. Sounds funny when you say that, but it's true. It's just, uh, you know, number go up technology sometimes doesn't go up all the time. So we have to bear that in mind. Uh, in other news, and unsurprising news, MicroStrategy purchased an additional 1,434 Bitcoin. Uh, they, they paid 882 million in cash approximately. Average price 57.5k. I bought a little Bitcoin today, 10k less. Um, so Michael Saylor, he doesn't care about what price he pays. He cares about having it, and he cares about five years, ten years into the future, and what will be valued there. For him, it's just a question of getting it. It doesn't matter what price. So he's not concerned about timing markets or anything else as I'm a little bit, bit more concerned. But basically, these guys, um, I had a couple of sidebar conversations with Michael Saylor, and I told him that there'd be more than 14 million Bitcoin. And I said, are you going to try to get to 140,000 Bitcoin? He didn't say yes or no, but I think he is. He's at 122,500 right now, approximately. So 17,500 to go. 
and they are at 1% of all Bitcoin that will ever exist. So we'll see. Average cost, I think, is just shy of 30k. And uh, they own, I don't know, 7 billion nearly right now. It depends on the Bitcoin price, of course. That's the sailor news. Now let's look at one key ratio here that I think is very important for us all to look at. This is the illiquid supply breakdown of Bitcoin. Here on this chart, you see the big deviation for the first time in a very, very long time. And in fact, it's the biggest deviation I've ever seen between the actual price of Bitcoin and the supply mapped out on this particular chart. Normally, they go hand in hand, uh, but this time it's a big break. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but this is very, very bullish. Um, and this, uh, I think this post is from Bitcoin Archive and Bitcoin is being sold to hodlers. Whales are buying like crazy. Michael Saylor is buying like crazy. Pension funds are buying like crazy. The people that are freaked out are the retail investors, but they don't really matter anymore because this has become a much bigger game. And illiquid supply plateaued briefly before buyers stepped in and they're in the market as of the last 24 hours. So they're buying even despite all this Evergrande FUD. So let's talk about Kathy Wood for a second. I'm going to change the format and touch on her because um, I'm a huge fan of Kathy Wood, as you guys know. She says, institutions are moving in fast. Um, and she told CNBC this today. And this is a new asset class with a very different correlation to other assets. And that's what makes it so important for institutions to hold. And she's still convinced of the thesis that institutions will put 5% of their treasury into Bitcoin. And if this happens, it'll add half a million dollars to the price. So if Bitcoin's at 50K today, it'll go to five, 550K if this happens. Now, this could take a long time to happen. It could take two years, three years, five years. I don't know. But the key here is, and the whole theme today is time series. Time series is important. So Kathy Wood has been proven to be correct time and time again. And we'll talk more about some of her high conviction plays like Tesla. But sometimes timing can be slightly off. And that's important as well to look at. So let's talk about time series switch gears entirely. And these are things you all need to know if you invest. I don't care if it's crypto or equities or anything else. There are four main components to time series. And you've heard me say this many times before. In this game, it describes the movement along the term. Second is seasonal variations, represents seasonal changes. For example, the have. Whoops. Whoa. Shit. Uh, hold on. Oh. We're live. I can hear you. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, everybody. So um, let me figure this out. All right. So live TV, something happened, something crashed, and uh, now it's apparently back. I'm going to pause these resources and save a couple of things on my computer just in case it's running out of bandwidth. Anyway, back to time series, the four main types. Um, secular trend recovered, seasonal variations like the Bitcoin halving is a seasonal variation. Cyclical fluctuations corresponds to periodical but not seasonal variations and irregular variations. This is great sniping opportunities and shorting opportunities. Let's talk about these and how they actually look like on a chart. So you have your irregular fluctuations where things move up and down and always revert to the mean. Always watch that. Then you have your cyclical. This could be the halving cycle of Bitcoin. Then you have your trend, your big trend line, which is the average growth rate. And then, of course, your seasonal variations. So let's show you what these look like on a Bitcoin chart so you all know and how you can use this data to actually make money. So this is a three-year chart. It is a log chart. Very important. Uh, and laying out the time series onto Bitcoin. The key takeaway here is during a bull run or even not during a bull run, Bitcoin is normally above the 200 day moving average. When it's under the 200 day moving average, it's a great buying opportunity. And here you see wild fluctuations, cyclical move seasons, etc. post having trend line. Remember, it's a log chart. So the first one is at the very bottom, 
fluctuations. This is where things can be very overbought or oversold. This is where you either go long or go short. And you have your cyclical represented by the blue line. This is kind of like the 200 day moving average is a good example of the cyclical line. And you can see how the price movement follows. And sorry, somebody pinging me. Then you have your seasonal variations, which could be after a halving. There's always a Bitcoin spike. And we saw that last year. And then your trend line, the red trend line, which is the average price over time. And or every time, if you look at this chart, you see the little blue arrows I have going up? Each time they're under 200 day moving average, that's a good time to buy. And we had three of those, three of those just in the past couple of weeks. So this is why it's very, very important to understand why charts move in certain ways and think in terms of these four different dimensions as you go forward. Now, there's another simpler time series. This is Bitcoin <laughs> and the price of Bitcoin on this day every day. So 2013, 930 bucks. 2017, 15,800. 2018, big dip, three and a half thousand. 2019, 7,000. And here we are today. Last year was 18,005. And today we're just shy of 49K. And that is the world we live in. So that's another way of looking at time series, but understanding how these all work together. Now, this is the DEXI, the dollar index. You can see it's a little stronger today. This is from Justin Bennett. And he's looking at the 2011 trend line and mapping that to the 2022 trend line. And he believes the Dixie will fall from here. And this is a good chance this will retest part of the catalyst, which will actually be very supportive for Bitcoin as we go forward. Remember, the macro downtrend is similar to 2002 and 2011 for reference. So let's see if you can see any other patterns here that exist in the dollar index per the four that we mentioned. Let me know in the comment below. I will read all the comments. So we'll see what happens. And I'll switch gears and talk about the importance of time series and investing. And that's the big message today. Kathy Wood and her company, she came out and she defended herself. Her ARK Invest have been clobbered really hard, especially some names like Teladoc and Invite and others. Even Square is down under 200. Um, Tesla is doing very well. <laughs> and Roku, I don't know. I don't follow that stock, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But of the four conviction stocks she has, uh, I own, of the five, I mean, her high conviction stocks, I own four. And I've owned all of them with the exception of Teladoc since before I even heard of Kathy Wood. So that's kind of interesting. But the thing is, she came out and said here that she believes, based on their very, very disciplined research, a compound annual growth rate of 40% year over year for the next five years for all of these high conviction names. That's huge. But what does that mean? But the other thing to take into account is time series. She can is very good at spotting disruption. But sometimes people can be a little bit ahead of their game. It's like people will predict Bitcoin going to 100,000 by the year end didn't happen. It's not going to happen. Does it mean they're wrong? No, it means their time series could be off. And that's what I've been thinking about a lot the last couple of weeks and hence this particular video. So let's see what exactly 40% compound annual growth rate does for your bag. If you invest 10,000 and you're in these names, that'll turn into 50,000. If you invest 100,000, that'll be half a million dollars, et cetera, et cetera. Super conservative. And if you do these and invest in these names and you swing trade them, you can make exponential gains over a five-year period. And that's another part of what this channel is about. So watch uh, that very carefully. And that was a key lesson. Now, this one here, I'm going to just say, Terra Luna made it into the top 10. And I want to do a little bit of an apology. I used a strong word. I do live screens. Sometimes a word will get misplaced or misused. And I used a strong word, stronger than I should have, to describe Terra Luna. And in full disclosure, I was not in Terra Luna for a few reasons. One, it ran so far already. Two, it was out of my wheelhouse of smart contract platforms. And three, I had no room in my stable. But I made some room. And last weekend, I bought Terra Luna at 60 bucks. And uh, the reason I bought it was it showed tremendous relative strength while the whole market was selling off hard. And my Luna position went from zero to being 14 times larger than my Cardano position overnight. So I am now holding Luna, everybody. So for the Luna army out there, this is part of the reason why as well. Terra Luna 
has the prospect of hitting 100 bucks very, very soon. The way this thing moves is quite incredible. And according to, uh, I can't remember who posted this, but it is a bullish pennant um, showing for the Terra Lunar chart. And if you look at the size of the flagpole height, it could easily go to $98. And this pattern typically does indicate a very strong upside move in very short order. So we'll see what happens. There is a slight concern about this chart, though, is if you look at the declining volume, then again, it was very high. So on average, it's still very high, but it is a little bit declining. So you always need to look at volume because that determines how much buying pressure there is. So Luna, well done. We'll monitor this carefully. Matic, another one that I've been very, very bullish on, is beginning to get a lot of airtime. I always said Matic is the most undervalued chain out there because they have so much, so much, everything being built on them and so much transactions and TVL locked activity and wallets and you name it, every single metric is blowing up hard. Now they just invested $400 million to buy a thing called Mir Protocol, which is a zero knowledge proof platform. You're going to hear a lot about ZK rollups. It's a new technology that will really help Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0 scale. A lot of people kind of are questioning, why, why will we need all these things if Ethereum 2 is a successful? Well, the truth is because of the sheer growth on the chain of Ethereum, they will continue to require these layer two scaling solutions and especially the ZK uh, proofs, ZK rollups as we go forward. Now, according to Polygon, the deal uh, that they made the acquisition for is about $400 million, which is huge. They are paying for it in Matic tokens. So they have those. And it is an early stage technology, but it will transform a lot of the industry as we go forward. So we'll see what happens. So there's more exciting news with uh, Matic. Let's look at the quick chart here for Matic. The, the token is up 320% since the summer, and I am actually updating my pricing models. I had predicted for this bull run for it to go to about 298, and I'm gonna revise it up to about $354 as we go forward. So wait till I finish that, but I'm still very, excuse me, very bullish on this particular name. And I think it has more room to run simply because of the metrics and adoption. So let's talk a little bit about some other news. WhatsApp, uh, they have a PAX pilot via Novi wallet. And as you know, uh, WhatsApp is a product. It's a company acquired by Facebook, which is now Meta. And the point of this is it is a pilot for very few American customers, but the banking industry should be very nervous between Strike, Stripe, Square, Twitter, and now this. It's, it's the ability to send and receive money through a mobile texting application basically for free, like the way you can tip people uh, using Twitter now. And the pilot will be powered by uh, Facebook's platform, Novi Wallet. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, very few people have it, only in the US right now. But they are basically essentially arming a global population of 2 billion WhatsApp users, I am a user myself, uh, to be able to exchange money basically for free. The banks are going to be quaking in their boots if this is successful. Oh my God, they're using, I think, Pax Gold as well, or Pax uh, Stablecoin as the underlying asset as well. Not Bitcoin yet, but it'd be cool if they did Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever, go forward. Another bit of news that might have people concerned, this guy, uh, I believe the courts are broken. They did say in the US that Craig is Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, he said, is this Bitcoin's inventor? Uh, there was a legal dispute um, from a former partner of Craig Wright's and uh, the partner's family, this poor guy um, died at the age of 44, but uh, the, there was a legal ruling. He won in court, but the family did get awarded 100 million from Craig Wright. I don't know where he's going to pay for that. Now, Craig could easily prove he is Satoshi Nakamoto by just moving some of his 1.04 million Bitcoins around his wallet. But uh, he doesn't do that for some strange reason. And I'm not the only one who thinks maybe he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, but these guys do too. We have Dan Held on the far right. We have Max Kaiser in the middle. And our favorite, <laughs> Vitalik Buterin as well is there too. They all believe he is a fraud and a scammer. So we'll watch this space. Who knows? 
uh, what's happening, but I do doubt he is Satoshi Nakamoto. If he was, why would he have created what he has done over the past years? And he only started claiming he was Satoshi in 2017. So it just all just doesn't smell right to me. A little bit of political news. These are the people, um, again, not to get political, but my Lord, sometimes the people in office that run our countries are, they, sh they shouldn't be there. So he started making comments at Hamster Coin and Mongoose Coin at a hearing, and it caused the creation of these numerous Mongoose Coins out there. It's kind of very funny because yesterday I made up a coin called GRQ, and by the end of the day, it was now it was listed in two blockchains. So uh, that just shows you how easy it is to create a token. Anybody can create one. Remember, there's so many scams out there. So be very, very careful, everybody. But this guy, uh, Brad Sherman, he is funded by payment processors to kill or eradicate crypto because that will eradicate the companies that pay him to be in office. So again, everything is corrupt everywhere. Be careful, everybody. Uh, and that's it for now. Uh, I hope you got something from the time series investing. I'm going to switch gears and do some questions. I haven't been able to do questions in quite some time uh, because of so much other stuff. Let me see. I know many of you are concerned out there with what's going on in the market, but uh, let me just pop up my trading view too, in case we need it. I hope it doesn't suck up all the resources. And Bitcoin is just under 48K again. So it's teetering. Um, we'll see. Okay. Luke Broyles, at what point do you cut your losses in underperforming assets like Ave, Uni, or Solend? So um, they are all, the thing about those positions, they are all tiny, very, very small overall percentages of my portfolio. Again, just to reiterate everybody, uh, my crypto is 98% Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, 2% eight or 10 other names and the positions are very, very small. And in fact, even within those positions, now uh, nearly half of the 2% is now um, Luna and a few other names. Solent, I think will come around in good time. Uh, it's about 20% under the IDO price right now. In fact, it was one of the green uh, items today out there in the marketplace. So uh, Ave, you need their suffering because of both competition and gas fees because they're ETH-based. So I still have hope maybe they can fix that stuff. But uh, I think my Avi and Uta prices, anyway, I'm still in profit, but waiting for them to run and then I'll exit out. And I'll have some exit videos coming up soon as well. And I already have formulated a hit list of uh, ones that'll come out first and I'll share that within the community so you guys can vote what I do first. So Shiva, do you expect ETH to drop to low 3000s and Sol below 160? Would they be a good buy at this stage in these prices? So ETH is super strong right now um, with adoption and everything else. It's still above 4,000. Definitely don't see it going to 3,000. Uh, last time I bought ETH, it was 2,400. But I think it's going to remain above 3,900 until we get through this FUD patch of bad news concern over supply chains, inflation, um, OMI, <laughs> OMI variant. Evergrande, I mean, it's just bad news comes hard and fast sometimes, and we're in that particular moment. In terms of Solana, um, it seems really, really tight, like it falls down sometimes to 176, but it hangs around 180, and it's showing tremendous support at 180 right now. So I don't see it going to 160 at all. Um, there's just too much demand for it. Unless, of course, the bottom falls out of the market, which is also possible, and then we could go down that level. But uh, I'm a buyer at uh, 180 at this stage. So I bought a, a little more uh, Solana today as well. Clavado Crypto, what is your feeling on the, the next week's Fed meeting? If they think they are going to taper sooner, do you think it's already priced in or do you expect some even more downside? It is priced in. The taper will be very gradual, 12.5%. The interest rate rise is the more of the concern. If they do accelerate the ability to increase interest rates sooner than expected, that's not priced into the markets, but the tapering is. Remember, they are printing so much money. Taking a 12.5% haircut to that amount of money printing is a small potato, not a big deal. So um, I, I think it is very much priced in. 
And remember, there's so much money out there, it is nowhere to go but into the stock market. And that's why we're seeing at this time of year in December, all the money flows to the good names so they can win their dress portfolios. And that's why you see things like uh, Tesla being so strong. So SK, in theory, shouldn't Luna do better than most in bear market conditions due to being a stablecoin play? Could do, yes, but stablecoins are heavily used when markets are very active. That's kind of a key part of their purpose. Um, I'm not too sure. The stablecoin environment is very different now than it was in 2017, 2018. So we'll see. And Luna is a different kettle of fish altogether. But uh, we'll see. It's, it's a very, very hard one to answer. But I do think the bear market will not be as bad as people believe. So I'm not, um, I'm not a believer. I think we do have that elongated cycle. And if there's a bear market, it'll be quite shallow. Remember, at least for Bitcoin, a ton of money is coming in in Q1. Per Raul Paul and a few other people uh, say that. So hang tight. Juju John, um, being fairly new, what the bear market like? I think it's what will the bear market look like and how do you make money in it? So um, again, I do believe it'll be very different to other bear markets. Uh, some people say there may not even be a bear market. It might just be a gradual jagged rise up. Um, there could be some um, big blow off events based on FUD and other areas, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and you can make money in any market, go up or down. You just need to be able to time things correctly. And I think there will be a move if, for example, there is a crypto bear market. And I think there needs to be a lot of shakeout because there's 13,000 tokens. 95% of them are worthless. That all, all that money needs to go somewhere. And what typically happens in the bear market anyway is money will move to the more pristine assets. So I do anticipate people will get tired of the 300 NFT cryptos that are out there <laughs> when that thing goes goes to hell and all the metaverse plays and all the meme doggy coins. Um, all that money will have to find a home. And that will probably be things like Bitcoin as we go forward. So that's kind of my theory. We'll see how it plays out, though. Um, then again, if Tether does blow up because of Evergrande, although they say it's not happening, then all bets are off. That could change everything. So we'll see. Um, Crypto Poppy, to whom uh, to the payments from Evergrande go to? Does Evergrande real estate affect USA? What bullish indicates to tell you we're still in the bull market? Um, all of them. Some of the ones I just showed, some of the whale accumulation happening right now, the you, you name it. There's so, so, so many, but there's a lot in this particular question. I'm just going to talk to the Evergrande piece. Basically, the Evergrande organization gets funding from bonds that are US dollar backed. And that's the problem. They're not able to repay those. So the people holding that paper, those bonds are going to lose money. And they are already junk level, already worth 15 cents on the dollar. So whoever had them has lost 85% of the money. So if you imagine a scenario where Tether, imagine half of their 60 billion of commercial paper is Evergrande, 85% of that 30 billion is gone. That's the concern. If that is the case, if Tether are lying to us and they do have some of that paper, then that's a, going to be a problem. So we'll see. But uh, in terms of real estate property developers, it will not affect the US market at all, I don't think. So super smiley fun. Are you familiar with Wickoff technical analysis pattern? If so, can you do a video on it? Yes. I am, and I have a TA Tuesday video that I did touch on uh, Wickoff. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was very much in play during the summer. And uh, anybody that saw that <laughs> did very well. So crypto, crypto, pass, <laughs> crypto Papi again. If Bitcoin passes 42K, what are the chances we go to 38K? And if we pass 38K, could we see 30K again? Per my numbers, let me try, see if I can pull up a chart here, because I do have my the steps in place. I don't know if I can get it right now. Six months, six month chart. It's kind of messy with all of the arrows, but in terms of Bitcoin going down, let me see if I can pop this up. Uh, 
Yeah, I got too many, too many things open on my screen. I don't want to show because you might see stuff you shouldn't see. But no, uh, Crypto Poppy, no. Uh, 42K is the floor, floor, floor. That would take a, a big event to happen. And if something does blow up like Tether, the impact on it might actually bring about a spike in Bitcoin. It might be the opposite to what people think because the money needs to get out of Tether into something fast and that would be Bitcoin then ultimately to cash out and come back. So that's kind of what we believe could happen. Um, 30K, no. 30K is a long way away. And remember, per the chart I showed at the very beginning with the 200-day moving average, Bitcoin spends very, very little time below that. And we are, the, that 200-day moving average now is about 49K. So I don't see us going down there. We could if something bad does go down, but I don't think so. Shabir Ahmed, is it time to shed losers like Cardano and Polkadot? Uh, Cardano will have only eight transactions per second. Ooh, I, I thought they said they'd have 250 transactions per second. Um, uh, <laughs> that's uh, terribly, terribly low. That's almost <laughs> like Bitcoin speed. Um, so Polkadot has been a huge disappointment uh, right now. I'm going to have a look. I, I am formulating this thing. I call it the hit list. And I'm identifying, okay, who what are the eight cryptos that we should whack? And which ones should we whack first? And at what prices should we whack them or layer out of them? So we're working on that right now. And we'll have something very, very soon. In fact, we're going to start with a few names that you guys are all familiar with. Um, the thing about Cardano is, you know, I, I've been, I've been kind of uh, dinging Cardano all year, but boy, I never thought at this stage of the game would go to a, under a dollar thirty again. I thought the floor would have been about a dollar forty per the Fibonacci level. It just goes from weakness to weakness to weakness. I think everybody is is throwing in the towel on that one. Um, it is shockingly bad, and Polkadot. The parachain thing didn't work. It looks like Polkadot is like an also run too. So I don't know what to say, but uh, it, it's just the, the, the Cardano situation is just way worse than I ever expected. And I had low expectations. Um, so Shabir, I think the whole market right now is getting crushed in many different areas. But uh, I do believe... You're way better off in something like a Luna or a Solana than you are in a Cardano. But selling at this level is so low, it's kind of painful. So, but what will run faster? You know, Cardano could go back to two bucks pretty easily. So do with that as you will. So Santiago L, uh, have you checked Red Fox? Yes, I have. Um, it's another metaverse play. I have looked at the top 12 metaverse plays. I have tried to value them, tried to appraise them. They are all bubblicious, which means they're all highly, highly valued. And I can't bring myself to invest in them or recommend them. And I don't want to say, oh, I, I don't want to buy Decentraland. The time to buy that was April to summer of this year or any of these other names. Uh, I looked at Red Fox and... No, I, there's just safer places to park money. Again, my focus is capital preservation. And we saw exactly how much some of these names fell over the past week or so. So the metaverse, I just, I, I can't, if I compare something like Luna or Solana or Chainlink to a metaverse play, it's like, there's no comparison. And that's the problem. Ariane G, are you concerned about the VC investors selling Solana and bringing the price down? So people always say, oh, VCs, got to remember, VCs are everywhere. They're in all the chains. They're in Avalanche. They're everywhere. It's not exclusive to Solana. A new chain has investors, and these guys have a lot. Um, looking at people like uh, Shamath, he I don't know how much he has of Solana. Probably not that much. He said he wasn't going to sell. Uh, I think they believe in this bull run running longer and they're going to wait and hold. 
And they do believe that if you ask any of that team that made that video many, many weeks ago, that caused me a ton of heartache and pain because I had to explain to a thousand people that it's not a concern. You know, I just look at the chains and I look at the fundamentals and I pick the winner. They all have insiders. Polygon Matic has a bunch of insiders that have lockups every single month or two and they dump a lot. Avalanche, huge lockups. You name it, they all have the same problem. So I'm not concerned. If you are concerned about insiders selling, then you shouldn't be in the crypto game or in the equity game. You probably need to buy gold or something. But even that's heavily manipulated. So it's just par for the course. You, you can't uh, be concerned. You got to look at growth rates and adoption. That's what matters, uh, not what insiders have or the risk of them selling. So uh, thoughts on Loopring from Lorit311. Could you do an interview with somebody who works with Loopring? I looked at Loopring and again, it was per all the fundamentals. I've got this model. I take all the fundamentals, I put them in the box, benchmark them against other assets and it didn't score well. Uh, and as a result, I know it's growing fast, but I got to see more growth to justify the current valuation. Um, so that's it. I don't want to also be seen as a guy interviewing people because then it might look like I'm paid to do an interview or paid to push. So um, I tend not to do those types of interviews. I keep on looking. I keep on putting uh, more data into the models and trying to find value, but I can't. And remember, I speak as well with my wallet. So if you look at what I bought over the last month, it's Bitcoin, it's Solana, it's Chainlink, and uh, Luna. That's it. The only place I can find value. And I look all the time. I look at all the fundamentals, look at all the valuation models, Crypto Compendium, Smart Contract Profiler, put in all the data. And that's kind of my conclusion. So it's also a very dangerous time as well to be investing in certain types of things. Uh, I did buy Phantom too. And boy, do I regret that. People were saying, Phantom, Phantom, Phantom. I bought it at two bucks. It's now $1.40, $1.50. So I threw a thousand bucks, 2,000 bucks at Phantom and lost. But that's why I'm 98% three cryptos. Okay. Um, the rest is just gambling for me. Um, so, and that's not a good, a good thing to do. So let me see. Pinch heavy. Uh, my stable currently has four horses, Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, and Matic. Would you recommend adding Luna or Avalanche to my stable? Luna, yes. I definitely would. Uh, not French advice. Avalanche, I never liked the tokenomics. I know they have a burn, but the burn doesn't justify it. So uh, the inflation is still twice as high as Solana and Avalanche. And that gives me some pause. Chris Williams, I am 0.15 into becoming a whole coiner for Bitcoin. Am I chasing a speeding train? Is at least something better than nothing? Yeah, yeah, having any bit of Bitcoin, getting off zero, as Jeff Booth says, is important for everybody. Um, I think the magic number to be in the top 5% is about 0.3 of a Bitcoin. So you got to double your stack to be in the top 5% of all Bitcoin holders. And make that your next goal if you can. And let me see, 0.15 at the current price. Well, you can do the math as to what it is, 47, 48K. I'm even buying uh, Bitcoin at this stage. So make your goals achievable or else they become frustrating. But everybody needs to get Bitcoin. Remember, the big money's coming in. They're going to buy it all up. Um, Nasir Hussein, what is your price prediction for VeChain for this full bull run? Um, is it recommended to continue holding VeChain or move to a faster horse? So uh, that is number one on my hit list. Uh, I'm going to do an exit VeChain video. I originally had hoped uh, VeChain would hit 30 cents on this bull run. Now it's more like 21, 22 cents, if we can even get there. Again, VeChain is one of those ones I analyzed a long time ago. And because the tokenomics are so bad, the price of VeChain technically will still be 33 cents five years from now, 10 years from now, because there's so much dumpage of tokens. So it's not one I like. Uh, or I've ever liked, but I will have a model coming out. But yeah, next, as soon as things start spiking, what you're going to see happening in the market is people that have been holding laggards will get rid of them. Now, the definition of a laggard is we are so far into the bull run right now. If 
something is like 50% off its all-time high at this stage of the game, that's your first red flag. And uh, I know that VeChain is one of those. So um, we'll see. That's one of the determinants that I use as well. Uh, you take Cardano way off the all-time high, so be careful. Um, Bat KD, is it wise to have all your savings in Bitcoin? So I treat Bitcoin as my money market, but if you have a 12 month plus time frame, like there used to be a thing called certificate of deposit in the United States. I don't know if people still use them, but you lock up your money for a certain amount of time. So if you have, you're in a position where you have money for a year plus and you won't need it, then I stick it into what I call my Bitcoin money market. That's why I keep buying Bitcoin because my fiat is shrinking at 15%. My Bitcoin is probably going to go up a lot faster than that. So it's for me, it's basic safety, basic hedge. It's my new form of money that I can use to buy things uh, down the line, like a Cybertruck. I believe Tesla will start accepting Bitcoin again real soon. So uh, from that perspective, yes, but make sure you won't need the money within a year's time frame because Bitcoin can be volatile, as you well know. Uh, let me just pull up. V chain price right now. <laughs> v chain is eight cents. Oh, we good. So the uh, good news is it was eighteen cents uh, back in early November. That was the time to exit. So hopefully we get eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two cents, and then layer out. And I'll share a uh, structure on how to do that as well as we go forward. So thank you as well for your donations as well, Santiago L. I used to get YouTube scam ETH videos. Send ETH and we double it. Now I only get YouTube Solana scam videos. <laughs> like I would say, follow the scam money. <laughs> That's a good analysis. At Bearded Day Crypto, babies are home. Everyone is happy and healthy, ready for the ugly Christmas party. Good stuff. Thanks, Beardy, and congratulations on the two beautiful new babies. Coco Puff, GRQ token lover. <laughs> lover. Yes, GRQ. Uh, again, the ultimate in garbage coin. Um, Luna, Grubbins, Grubbins, GT350 playing with pastels, Raguna Gad Gadij, uh, with Sam Hamze, Vanessa Chaji, Wayland Yutan Xenomorph. That's a complex one. It's like tunas on toast. Um, Gareth Hooper, Kelton Scott, St. Jude News, tunas on toast. There he is. Niels Breckhoff, Bad Kitty, Leah Papel, and BD McGee. Again, everybody, these are strange and scary times. But if you look at history, look at the time series and look at where we are now, despite all the FUD, we're going to look back at this in 30 days, 60 days, and things should be a lot higher than they are now. So we'll see. And Q1 is going to be a bumper quarter. That's not just me saying that. And I hate to be pushing out the timeline. A lot of people are hoping we'd have a huge November. Didn't happen. Huge December. Didn't happen. So now... The mindset to have is don't expect things to happen because everybody says they're going to happen. But Bitcoin has a habit of surprising you when, you're not, when you least expect it. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.